Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Belinda. I go by the name of Belinda Chosen. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you are a new subscriber, you are welcome. So while I prepare for this video, um, I got ready and I sat here and my Lord, I don't know what to talk about. I looked through my list of topics that I have written down that I wanted to talk about and nothing was jumping at me. So I started, I prayed a little prayer. I'm like, you know what, God, just speak whatever you desire to speak through me. Unless you speak, I'm just making a whole bunch of noise. And the word that he's put in my heart today is, if you desire marriage. If you're like me, if you come across a video of people praying, I quickly just switch it because I'm like, I don't know what kind of person is praying for me. But I feel like, I feel it strongly in my heart just to open up this um, topic today with prayer that the Lord may speak to me whatever he wants to speak to me um, whatever he wants to speak to us because I believe that this word is for me as well because I desire marriage but if you are not comfortable um, with praying you can just mute this uh, part of the video if you feel comfortable um, just bow your heads and let's pray father I thank you God for this moment right now God Lord you are so good you are so amazing and you reign you know everything that each one of us go through our secret desires our secret cries and our tears you know it all Lord you know us better than we know ourselves father I submit to you I surrender to you if I've sinned against you in any way Lord God I pray that you forgive me Lord, I yield to you. Holy Spirit, come. Use my mouth as your mouthpiece to speak whatever it is you want to speak to everyone watching today, to every daughter, to every son, God. Use me to speak to them, Lord God. Whatever you have for us today, open, our, open up our hearts to receive it. Lord, I just, I just pray for every individual, God, whatever they're going through in their lives, whatever promises they're waiting for you for, God, I pray that you would bring it to pass. The good work that you began in them, Lord, I pray that you would finish it unto the day of Jesus Christ. I pray that no weapon formed against them will prosper. And I pray that every tongue that rises up against them in judgment shall be condemned. Father, I pray that there is no more delay, that whatever you set for them is for them, God. I pray that any anything and everything that the enemy has stolen from them, I pray that you restore it, O oh God. For those who are believing you for a kingdom marriage, for those who are believing you for a breakthrough, whatever the breakthrough may be, whether it's marriage, whether it's finances, whether it's a job, God, I pray, Father, that you would do it. All you need to do is speak a word and it shall be done. For your word is not empty. It does not return back to you void. So, Father, speak a word because the doors that you open, no man can close. And the doors that you close, no man can open. For you are the God of the valley and the God of the mountain. I decree and I declare your blessing over every individual watching this, oh God. I pray that you meet them where they are. For you, Lord God, are close to the brokenhearted and you save those who are crushed in spirit. There's a lot of times, Lord, we give up praying. We lose faith because the things that we are hoping for, we are praying for, doesn't seem to be happening. It seems to be delayed. It seems like everything else is working out for everybody else but us. But God, you have saved the best for last. Because your word says the first shall be um, the first shall be last and the last shall be first. So God, I pray that there's no more delay, that they'll receive every blessings that you proclaim for their lives. I pray that you open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain. Open up their hearts to receive, oh God. And whatever it is that you're teaching them, help them to learn it. Whatever it is that you're speaking to them, help them to hear it. Because God, your sheep knows your voice. So Lord God, I pray that you visit each and every individual watching this video today. And let your arm be extended towards them, wherever they are right now, God. I pray for your peace. I pray for your joy. I pray, God, for your salvation. I plead the blood of Jesus over them, oh God. I thank you for this time, Lord God. Open up our hearts to receive whatever it is that we need to receive. In Jesus' holy and mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe in the power of prayer? How many of you believe that prayer works? And how many of you believe that if you ask and you believe that you receive the thing that you ask, as the Bible says, it shall be given unto you. The Bible also says that we have not because we ask not. Sometimes it's so easy to stop praying and hoping when we've been disappointed. We, we have unmet expectation. And it, 
And I've gone through this where at a point in my life, I just stopped believing, I stopped hoping, and I stopped thinking like, I deserve it. I deserve to be happy too, but God really had to work on me and say, no daughter, you deserve it. There's a reason why I haven't given you certain things that you're praying for because I know what's best for you and I see far beyond above what you cannot see. I know what's best for you. There's certain things that needed to be pressed and shaken first, you know, to let you know that it's not in your own strength but it's only through me. How many of us know that God is a way maker, miracle worker, light in the darkness? So I wanna encourage you today, whatever it is that you're believing God for, do not give up. Do not give up, do not lose heart. I don't, I'm not saying this very lightly because this is my situation right now. I've come to a point in my life when I just, when I've started to just realize, you know what God, it's your will, let your will be done. I desire your will more than I desire my own. I desire you, Lord God, more than I desire a husband. Though you give me that desire, but I desire you more. Your, the, your word says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added not to us. So when I ask God, Lord, what do you want me to speak today? And the word that's come to me is, if you desire to get married. The desire of marriage, especially in us women, is so strong, especially if you're believing for a kingdom marriage. Because when I go on YouTube, every time I come across a prophetic word or you know a kingdom marriage, marriage this, and a lot of those things are like going viral on, on YouTube. It's in every it's in it's on every channel. And I start to think, Lord, are these people really seeing this? Is this really a message from you? Or are they just talking about this to get views? You know, what is the truth? Who is really, who are you really speaking to? And I know that sometimes when we're desperate for something, it can lead us, that desperation can lead us to certain things, to believe in anything anyone tells us. And when somebody is giving a prophetic word about marriage or anything like that, the most important thing that you can you can do is not, is not just take it and just keep it in your pocket. You need to bring it before God. You need to bring it before God and seek the Lord. When someone has spoken a prophetic word over you or a word over you, it's either a confirmation or you pray that God confirms it. The enemy can use our desires against us. How many of you know that? How many of you have gone through something like that before? The enemy can take our desire and twist it and make it seem like it's from God, but it was never from God. That's why oftentimes a lot of people end up with the wrong man, end up in the wrong relationship, end up in the wrong marriage, and end up getting divorced because, you know, we ran ahead of God. We didn't wait for God. We did not wait for God. And the Bible says, do not awaken love until it is fully ready. So if you desire marriage like me, I'm just asking that you please, please wait on the Lord. Marriage is not a joke. One common interest that I know that us Christian women have is the desire to get married, the desire to have that God-fearing man, the desire for that kingdom spouse. I can testify to this because there's time, I've been waiting for so long. And a lot of the times it's not because God made me wait so long, it's because I realized that I ran ahead of God because I wasn't patient enough and then I found myself in a ditch and I cry out and I start to blame God. God, why did you let this happen? But it's not because God let it happen, it's because of my own impatientness. I'm not waiting for God. I'm just urging everybody watching. I know you desire marriage. It is a good thing. It is good. God created marriage. It is a good thing. It's a great desire and I believe that God gave us that desire. But are we really seeking the Lord and asking Him direction in this area? Or are we just going off prophetic words that we see on YouTube? Are we just going based on prophetic words that everybody's speaking? Or as God may be speaking about marriage to you? Sometimes God is not going to give us things that we're not ready for because He knows that we probably destroy it with our own hands. And I think back, those times I was so desperate to get married. If God had really truly given me that marriage, that kingdom marriage, that kingdom spouse, to be honest, I'll probably be divorced by now because I wasn't mature enough, one, to handle it. Two, I didn't have the mindset to handle it. Three, I was not a wife. I was not prepared to be a wife. 
though I, I may seem like I'm independent because I live on my own and I've been living on my own for a very long time and I'm street smart it doesn't mean that I have the, cap um, the capacity or the capability to be a wife what does it mean to be a godly wife you know if you read the story of Ruth the story of Esther how can you lead you know how can you help your husband or be his helper in times of trouble when pressure comes we need to honestly go back to the basics and start reading the Word of God and really seek God for our purpose really seek God for what he has called us to do really seek God for his will because a lot of us are just focused on, Lord, bring me my husband. Lord, bring me my husband. Lord, bring me my husband. That we don't see anything else. And then we look to our neighbors. We look to our friends. They're getting married and we're bitter and we're pissed and we're mad. Marriage is not a joke. Marriage is not a joke. Marriage is a covenant. Because the Bible says, let your yes be a yes and your no be a no. And we take this covenant, this oath before God for better or for worse, to do, to, to, till death do us apart. When it comes down to it, can you really love that man or that woman through better and worse, through rich and poor, through sickness and health, till death do you apart? Do you have the skills to communicate? Do we have the skills to be financially um, intelligent, to be financially smart? I'm still struggling to ever be financially smart. If you watch my last video <laughs> or the video that's coming up, I just recorded, I'm recording these videos and I'm gonna edit them about you know the perfume stuff so probably those decisions weren't smart because those perfumes are not cheap but are you financially responsible will you marry you do you like yourself do you love yourself if you desire marriage it's a good thing but let me ask you are you truly ready to be a wife are you truly ready to carry the responsibility of the household to support your man, your husband, to be that Ruth or that Esther? Are you a Ruth? Are you an Esther? Let's not be blown by every wind of doctrine, by every prophecy or every word of marriage. Because every time I go on YouTube, all I see is, your husband is coming, your husband is coming. I'm not saying that those words are not good, but I'm wondering like, do we rely on those to carry us? Do we rely on those words or do we rely on God himself? It's so easy to idolize marriage. It's so easy to just let marriage become an idol. Listen, from what I've heard, marriage is work, but there is grace. And I believe there's certain things and blessings that the Lord is gonna bless us, bless us with that we cannot have outside of a covenant, but in covenant. You know, two have a great reward for their labor. Two is better than one. There's certain blessings, I believe, that can be only given in a marriage covenant. And I've been telling myself, I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to get married. I'm ready to get married. Just a few weeks ago, I had gone into a three-day fast, no water, no food, and I truly just wanted to seek the Lord. I'm like, God, you know what? I want what you want for me. I want what you have for me. I really want to hear you God speak to me I don't I want to sh I just want I just want to shout out every voice of the enemy I want to shout out every little voice my own I just want to hear you God in this moment in this preparation stage in the season of singleness what are you teaching me what do I need to learn what do I need to hold on to what do I need to let go of what do I need to see and what do I need to forget and I just God just put in my heart read the book of Esther and I read the book of Esther and how she was she like she found favor she found favor that was only because of God fasting three days with no water and food is very challenging and I tried to ignore it and I tried to stay away from it but God kept bringing that to me bring it to me you know fast and I'm not saying you should went fast for three days with no water and food however you seek the Lord seek but sometimes there's things that need to fall off us there's sometimes there's things that needs to break that cannot break on, on, on unless through prayer and fasting and I've really seen that as an evidence in my life because after I've fasted and prayed for those three days 
honestly my life has never been the same I'm not joking I'm not exaggerating I have not been the same the encounter that I have with God one-on-one -on -one, and how my my relationship just went like from 50 to 100 with the Lord just by fasting the things that I could not get over for years instantly there was a breakthrough through prayer and fasting the things that I held on in my heart that I thought I had forgiven honestly broke off me and one thing that God revealed to me because I had the desire to get married is that I'm the kind of person when it comes to relationship I like to sweep things under the rug and not deal with it and then in, in terms of not dealing with it and not communicating eventually I become very defensive and I seem crazy because I'm not communicating how I feel I'm not com communicating why I'm bad I just kind of hold on to it and I go crazy and I become defensive and the Lord starts to speak to me I don't want you to carry that attitude into your marriage because I love you, because I know what's best for you, because you're my daughter and my child and I value you and I care for you. Because you told me, Lord, do a work in me and that's exactly what I wanna do in you. So I'm not gonna allow you to go into a marriage with that mindset because I want you to have a successful marriage planted and found in the foundation of Christ. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so true. I, I, I am very defensive. I am very defensive and I, and I sweep things under the rug, rug and I explode. I'm like, that is not an attitude to bring in my marriage. That will lead to a disaster so fast. And one thing I've been trying to work on for a long time and I thought that I got better at it, that I was good at it, was being vulnerable. And God was still speaking to me. Girl, you need to open up. You need to be vulnerable when that man comes. Unless you've learned how to be vulnerable, he ain't gonna come. I'm thinking all this time that, you know, is the enemy keeping my man away from me. But this whole time, I didn't know that I was the one causing my own delays. I was causing my own delays because there was still growing that needed to take place. There was still grooming that needed to take place. There's still things in me, deep down in me, that I didn't even know that God needed to uproot and expose. And that's the things he's been exposing to me. And to be vulnerable, don't be defensive, learn how to communicate. To be honest, this is the things that I've been working on. And I've been saying, God, help me, please. You reveal these things to me, help me. Help me, help me change, transform me. This is not an overnight change, work on me. Where the things I was afraid of, things I was afraid of, you know, telling that future husband when he came, I'm just like, wow. I'm not going to be afraid to express my emotions. I'm not going to be I'm not going to be afraid to like expose the inner parts of me because if this if this is truly a God sent man, nothing or any flaw can chase him away. Because he's going to see me in the eyes of Christ. He's going to see me in my full potential. He's going to see me the way Jesus sees me. How many of you right now if you go into a relationship and you meet that godly spouse will be will not be afraid to be yourself how many of you will be so confident to be yourself and expose your most darker parts of you and not and not be afraid to be vulnerable how many of you are are, are you is your heart truly right you need to search within our our hearts a lot of times marriage fail because we go people go into marriage not ready they rush it people go into a godly marriage because they are horny this is the truth I've seen it firsthand. People get married because they want to have sex and then they build their foundation on sex alone and then when they go into that um, marriage and that confidence and then it's things happen, it falls because sex was their foundation. They built on shallow ground and when the wind came against that house, it fell with a great crash. If you desire to get married, don't worry. I believe that God will come through for you and you'll meet that man. That man that's gonna love you for who God created you to be. So don't rush it. Don't end up in the wrong situation and then tomorrow you start to blame God. Look, look at this man that you brought me. You know what I mean? If you desire to get married, God knows the desires of your heart. If you desire to get married, God has heard you. If you desire to get married, wait a little while longer for God's best for you. One common interest that we all have 
is the desire to get married, the desire to be to meet our future, you know, our godly spouse. And I always believed that my pur my purpose, or I should say, my uh, ministry was not going to begin until my husband comes and we start to do this together. But I felt like that was just a wrong way to think. My purpose is not based on no man, but based on the calling of God in my life. So if I'm in the field doing what I'm supposed to do, like doing the work that God has called me to, while in the field, the man will see me. Not me waiting here like, I'm not going to start that business or I'm not going to buy that house or I'm not going to start that YouTube channel or I'm not going to talk about relationship because I need the man to come first. And this, I like honestly, being real with you guys, this was my thing. I'm like, I think my my ministry here on YouTube is going to take off where when I start to like, you know, sit down and talk to you guys about relationship and marriage and singleness with my future spouse. And I realized, no. How about I start now and I be faithful with the little thing and not despise the small beginnings. That was my mindset. I honestly intentionally had to shift my perspective and the way I, I thought. And now I desire to get married, yes. I believe the godly man's gonna come. I believe I'm gonna get married soon because my word for this season is marriage. But just because my word for this season is marriage doesn't mean I should put it at the forefront of my focus. I've, okay, I've received it. Marriage is my word. I receive it, God. I give it back to you. Okay, now back to what you need me to do. So Lord, in this time while I'm waiting, what do I need to do? How do I become a wife? Should I start learning how to cook? You know, like what skills do I need to learn? How can I help my husband lead spiritually? How can I be that godly woman? That woman um how can i be like a root how can i be like an esther how can i lead my home you know like what has god called you to do in this season and for me it's just to speak to speak to you guys to be vulnerable with you guys to share my my experiences with you with you guys to share my testimony with you guys to glorify god you know to confess christ before you guys and even if my videos is probably only getting 20 30 views that is fine. I'm not going to despise the small beginnings. I'm not going to despise the small beginnings. I'm not going to think because if I bring my husband on this channel, I'm going to get more views. No, that's not a good way to think. How many of us know it's good to be faithful with the little things? To be faithful with the little things that so that God can trust us with even bigger and better things. So if you desire to get married, I'm speaking to you. If you desire that kingdom spouse, I'm speaking to you. Don't worry. That desire is not of your own. That is a God-given desire. That's a good desire. The, 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 the desire of wanting to get married, that is a beautiful desire. And I believe that God has placed that desire in our hearts. But while we're waiting, how are you waiting? How are you waiting? How are you serving God with your time? What do you do with your time? Are you focused on a man? Or is, you, is your eyes on God? So if you desire to get married, I believe in my whole heart that that man is coming in due time, in the right time. God is always on time. And I had a beautiful dream last year, or was it this year? I don't remember. And in the dream, I just saw a whole bunch of wedding dresses. And if I've been witnessing it. A lot of people be getting married, and a lot of people be getting engaged and getting married. It's been happening. So don't worry, don't be sad if your friend is getting married or starting their lives. Don't be sad if your neighbor is getting married. Clap for them and rejoice with them and bless them. Your own will come. You know? And I've just realized it wasn't my time yet. Because there's so much stuff. So much stuff that was being revealed and uprooted that I'm just like, oh my gosh. I didn't even know that was there. Like my daddy issues, you know what I mean? Like just things. And God has been healing me. And when I asked God, Lord, what do you want me to speak today? And the word was, if you desire to get married, he knows the desires of your heart. If you desire to get married, he knows, he's heard, he knows your desires. 
And that's his desire for you too, to get married because you know the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and become one with his wife. You know, bones are my bones and flesh are my flesh, my Boaz. Take heart, your Boaz is on his way. As you are preparing to be a wife, don't be discouraged. Don't rush into a relationship for the wrong reasons. If you're truly desiring a kingdom spouse, keep waiting. If you desire to, if you desire to get married, God has heard you. So I want to read a passage of scripture from the Songs of Solomon, chapter 8, verses 4. I'm going to read from two different versions. And the first version I'm going to read from is the New King James Version, which reads, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. And the other translation is the New Living Translation. And it reads, Promise me, O women of Jerusalem, not to awaken love until the time is right, young women of Jerusalem. I just want you to meditate on that and just see God's face and put God's first in his kingdom of righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I pray that you're encouraged. I just want to close this out with prayer. If you're comfortable, please pray with me. Let's get right into this prayer. Heavenly Father God, I thank you God for everyone that's watching this um, video right now, God, for those who desire to get married. Lord, I pray, Father, that in the right time, that you will bring that godly spouse, that godly husband, that godly wife in their way, oh God. That Lord, that when you bring that spouse to them, that there will be no confusion. Because God, you are not the author of confusion. And there's so many times where we are confused and we don't know if it's the one or not. Lord, is this the one for me? Is this the one for me? But Lord, we know that you are not the author of confusion. Father of God, I pray that when he comes, or she comes, that you will open up our eyes to recognize him or he, oh God, for the men waiting for a wife and the women waiting for a husband. Open up our eyes in the time when it's the right time to recognize them and them to recognize us. We come against every spirit of confusion in Jesus' name. And Father, oh God, I come against every delay, every kingdom of marriage that has been delayed, I come against it. Because we know that the enemy is against marriage. But Father God, I pray that our hearts be open up to you, O oh God. That Lord, that we will not build on shallow ground. That we will build on your foundation, God. So Father, bless these beautiful women and men with godly spouses, God. Because you have given us that desire of marriage. It's not of ourselves. Because if some of us could turn off that desire, like myself, we would. But God, you have given up that desire. So God, bring it to pass in your right time. In this time, show us what you need to show us, oh God. So Lord, I pray and I'm excited for all the marriages and the engagement that's going to happen this year and the years to come. For those who are young or old that are still believing for a kingdom spouse, God, you can do anything. There is nothing impossible for you. You can do all things, oh God. All you gotta do is speak the word and it shall be established. It is so, God, as you speak, there is no other God beside you. For you are God and you are God alone. You are faithful, you are true to yourself. To you, God, we cry out, Abba, Father. So God, I pray a blessing over everyone watching this, oh God. I pray, God, that you ease their heart as they wait on you, that you work on them as they wait on you, oh God. I pray that you bless them abundantly, oh God. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain. Lord, your name, oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. So Lord, I just thank you for everyone, oh God. I pray that you bless them and give them the desires of their hearts according to your will in your right time, oh God. Father, Lord God, as Jesus prayed, nevertheless, not my will be done. Let your will be done, oh God. So I decree a blessing over them, Lord God, in Jesus' name. 
Amen. I hope you're blessed by this word today. Be encouraged, guys, family. I'm gonna start, you guys are my family. You know, we're all one in Christ. So all, we're all members of one body in Christ. So be encouraged. I'm excited to hear about your testimony of how God came through, your testimony of how God brought you that kingdom spouse, your testimony how God transformed you inside, inside and out and how he got you ready for the one. So be encouraged. I love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share the video to encourage somebody else. Let it be encouragement. You may want to come back to the video at a later on at a later time just to encourage you and just to, you know, really encourage you to wait for God's timing. I love you guys and I will see you guys back again in my next video. Bye. I thank God for the